Manila, Philippines. A pulsating mass of nearly three million devout Catholics moves in procession along a six kilometer route. These devotees are hoping to touch and be touched by a religious icon which Filipinos believe has mystical powers. In this procession of the Black Nazarene, hundreds of dehydrated and exhausted worshippers collapse. Others suffer injuries or are in a state of panic. All need medical attention. We're at the heart of one of the largest religious gatherings on the planet. Ace is a first responder with the Red Cross. So's his colleague, Arquez. They've invited us to join their emergency team. On the same continent, more than 4,000 kilometers from Manila, in the Indian city of Allahabad, the world's largest religious encounter is underway. Here, a human tide of more than 100 million believers converge as part of the Kumbh Mela, a Hindu pilgrimage. In the heart of District 16, the gathering's ground zero, where the risk of fire and rioting are highest, we'll be tagging along with emergency medical technician Indra Mohan Yada and his driver, Amit Kumak Soni. Embedded at the heart of these fascinating mystical gatherings, we'll see how devoted first responders deliver critical medical care. Today, the Filipino security alert level is at its highest. Authorities fear a possible Islamist terrorist attack as tens of thousands of Catholic pilgrims from across the country arrive in Manila. Manila is already one of the most densely populated cities in the world with more than 43,000 citizens per square kilometer. An army of Red Cross responders is on site. Each member must know exactly what to do in any situation and how best to use their equipment. In a few short hours, 1,000 rescue workers will be on the ground. Arques and Ace lead the teams. Each of them has been working in emergency services for 10 years. Every year since their graduation, they've been here on the ground during the procession of the Black Nazarene. This is one of the biggest events. The whole Red Cross are ready to respond for the whole occasion of the Seat of the Black Nazarene. The image of the Black Nazarene will be coming from that street right there. This area is the uh, res mostly residential area of the Quiapo, uh, Manila. So most of the patients uh, can have sprain or fractures. So that's the case that we get from here. Young and old, the healthy and the sick, families with children, even pregnant women arrive at the capital from towns and villages across the country. Many wear processional uniforms and carry banners. Some even bring their own replicas of the Black Nazarene. Some are life-size, some are miniature. <laughs> This is our, our own black nursery. Mm -hmm. It's made of wood. All the devotees in the black nursery, they all uh, get together and then uh, praising and thanksgiving and then asking for the, for the intention for the black nursery. All our prayers, especially for the health, for the peace of our country. This Southeast Asian country is thought to be one of the most religious on the planet. Only a very small percentage of the population is atheist, and the vast majority, 80% of Filipinos, are Catholic. We are celebrating our 413th year of fiesta since the Black Nazarene came here in the Philippines. 
It was brought by the priests from Mexico. Filipinos believe this statue of Jesus bearing the cross has miraculous powers. It has survived for centuries against the highest odds, most notably its journey from Mexico to the Philippines in the 17th century, when the ship transporting the artifact caught fire. The statue was damaged by smoke, hence its name, the Black Nazarene. It has subsequently survived two more fires, two major earthquakes, and the bombing of Manila during the Second World War. And so it is that faithful Filipinos want to get up close to the Black Nazarene. When touching it with their own hands is impossible, worshippers throw their clothes, hoping their garments will be rubbed against the statue and tossed back, now imbued with the statue's special powers. It has been part of the culture of the Filipinos to be able to touch the image of, of God, of Jesus, per se, because it was an act of faith, as it was written in the Bible, the story of a woman who was bleeding for 12 years. The woman touched the tassel, the end clothes of Jesus, and she was healed. Believers arrive in large numbers, setting up anywhere they can. Rescuers set up care tents all along the route. Refuges where emergency teams can assist devotees if they fall ill. Allahabad. For hundreds of years, people from all over India have journeyed to Allahabad, settling in tents along the banks of the Ganges and entering sacred communion with the river. During the Kumbh Mela pilgrimage, which lasts more than a month and a half, the city of Allahabad, with its million or so inhabitants, will swell to nearly a hundred times its size. We accompany the Babas, who are holy men. We will stay here and beg for a month. Thirty thousand police and military personnel provide security. Religious tensions are high here, and the risk of a terrorist attack is very real. Hindu nationalists refer to this place as Prayagraj, to remove any hint of a Muslim name. This northern Indian city is located 1,300 kilometers from the capital of Pakistan. We are here to protect the population and make sure there are no acts of terrorism. Safety is our main concern. We must show the peaceful path for people who come here from all over the country. For many believers, Kumbh Mela is a good time to encourage harmony among India's many religions. This is all about Indian culture. Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians. The four great religions are gathered here. It's a message for humanity. When so many people from different religions come together here, we send the message that the nation is united and that we are united. In addition to terrorism, there's another threat here, the crowd itself. During the last Kumbh Mela, 40 people died, crushed in a giant stampede. This is District 16, the heart of the Kumbh Mela site. This sector always has the greatest need for emergency response because this is always the most densely populated. These sadhu men have set up camp here. Homeless and poor, these ascetics lead a life of extreme deprivation, in theory. But it's not always the case, as Hindus revere and often reward these holy men. There are estimated to be five million sadhus in India. 
Among the sadhus, a minority smokes hashish in ritualistic offerings to Shiva, one of the central gods of Hinduism, a transgressing god, the master of asceticism. It's the Kumela, a big party. The great Rama is here, but he hides, disguised. Krishna's here too, but no one can see him. I won't leave here until I meet the creator of the world. Others practice mortification. This sadhu has not put his arm down in years. Pilgrims seize the opportunity to seek blessings in the sadhu's presence. Indra, Amit, and other emergency workers are strategically deployed throughout the site. Their tent is situated so they can aid as quickly as possible. This is our headquarters. These are our beds. We sleep here. Our communication center is located right next door. So when there's an emergency, we can quickly identify the location, rush to our ambulances, and get to the patient. Amit and Indra live in two different states, hundreds of kilometers from here. They arrived a month before the event to familiarize themselves with the sprawling site. There are no street names and no addresses in this makeshift city. Ambulance drivers like Amit must navigate using a whole new set of skills in order to get to patients quickly. We've been working together for a month now and we get along very well. Sometimes I have to compromise, but he's a really good partner. When we get sent on a call in the ambulance, we have to make sure we arrive in time to treat each patient. And sometimes that's a challenge because we don't always know exactly how to get there. Indra is a deeply religious family man. Although this is his first time working the Kumela, he draws on more than 10 years experience. There's no doubt in his mind that only experienced professionals should be assigned to the event. There are 2,000 healthcare workers here. It's an intense and complex challenge. During the Kumbh Mela pilgrimage, there are about 100 different communities of sadhus that come here from all over the country. Some of them never travel other than to come to this festival. They only come for the Kumbh Mela. Our responsibility is to provide medical services whenever they're needed and generally take good care of them. Going on fewer hours sleep than they'd like, Amit and Indra begin their work day. They have no idea when it will end. The Philippine capital has been invaded by believers from across the country. Pilgrims and volunteers alike sleep wherever they can. Red Cross teams have barely finished setting up when they're called to action. A woman has had a bout of vertigo and collapsed. It's the eve of the Great Parade. Filipinos from across the country have congregated in front of the Quiapo Church, the home of the revered statue. Some carry their own replicas of the Black Nazarene. Priests bless the pilgrims and their replicas. They brought their images here in Quiapo to be blessed, and they will bring it home, the blessing that they receive here, to their neighbors who cannot go to Quiapo on the feast day. While pilgrims assemble, already feeling the power of their faith, response teams finish setting up. Mm -hmm. 
A total of 12 basic first aid stations have been established along the route. A more robust emergency center equipped for surgeries and childbirths has been set up a short distance away. We are here for one goal is to save lives. <laughs> this is our uh, operating unit. Uh, we can go do uh, minor surgeries and uh, delivering of pregnant women. And for those faithful whose lives may be at risk, transport to nearby hospitals will be coordinated using the dozens of ambulances commandeered for the event. Only a few hours to go before the start of the parade. Arkes and Ace go over basic instructions with their crew, reminding them to be vigilant, always on the lookout for anything suspicious. As much as possible, PPEs, alam nyo na po yan. Lahat po nakakita, gloves, so we don't want to have our volunteers, our medical team, to have any problem. Anything suspicious na makikita natin, please uh, report to the mga police surrounding the area. Just two days ago, police arrested two Islamists linked to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Can you see that the devotees are uh, walking barefoot? They're this one of the reasons why most of the cases that uh, we handle, minor wounds, would involve the feet. They would have cuts and abrasions. Um, more serious uh, injuries like fractured toes or dislocated uh, ankle. The, the Black Nazarene is now moving. It's uh, near uh, Manila Hotel. The procession has begun. Arceus and Ace are far from the revered statue. They're part of one roving squad, of which there are many that will circulate among the celebrants all along the parade route. We are currently in our third first aid station. So this is the area where the route would be coming through. Uh, our strategy here is basically we have our roving teams are in place inside the crowd. So they would be the one to pick up the patients from inside and bring them to our first aid station. The sun has risen and the mercury is going up. It's already 25 degrees Celsius. Emergency crews respond to cases of dehydration and respiratory distress. Some pilgrims are willing to put their lives on the line to touch the Black Nazarene. We've been coming to the procession for 15 years. We've gotten close enough to touch the Black Nazarene in the past, and we're going to try to touch it again this year so that our dreams can come true. We count on the Black Nazarene to guide and protect us. We don't wear shoes so that we won't hurt anyone if we step on them. Volunteers link arms and form a human barrier to prevent the crowds from overflowing into the first aid station. As the Black Nazarene is moving, uh, we'll try to transfer to another first aid station to see if there is any needs for other of the, uh, of the first aid station. The parade proceeds with its celebrated centerpiece mounted on a float, which is pulled by 25 protectors of the statue. These attendants are called mamamasums, which means those who carry on their shoulders. Four other protectors are atop the float, 
ready to catch clothing thrown at them by believers. They rub the garments on the statue, imbuing them with the Black Nazarene's mystical powers and toss them back into the crowd. Our case circulates much further ahead on the course. Uh, we are going to Palanca Street. Uh, we're going to check out the situation there. Palanca Street is very narrow. There's fear this might cause a bottleneck which could lead to injuries. Sir, thank you very much. The Black Nazarene hasn't even come into view yet, but many pilgrims have already collapsed from heat stroke. Back in Allahabad, India, at the Kumbh Mela pilgrimage, Indra and Amit are answering their first call of the day. Door 2 on Red Street. Is it next to Triveni Marg on Juna Akada, near Panchayat's offices? Police and soldiers stationed around the site assist in finding worshippers who need help. They've come to assist an elderly sadhu who's almost too weak to walk. His purpose at the pilgrimage is to show devotion and beg. He practices these duties to the exclusion of almost everything else. Sir, have you eaten? No. You haven't eaten since this morning? The ascetic is rushed to hospital, where doctors will treat him free of charge. Lie down, please. Call the doctor. The patient felt weak. He hasn't eaten anything all day and he collapsed. He isn't well. He was already weak because of a hernia that hasn't been treated. Sometimes during the festival, celebrants don't eat properly. Today he was very weak, so they called the ambulance. The old man is in a bad way. He needs more extensive testing. The decision is made to transfer him to the Kumbh Mela Central Hospital. Amit turns on the sirens to clear a path through the chaotic environment. How are you? Are you all right? We'll be there soon. Hello, Saigar. How are you? Dr. Rishi Sahai is the acting director of disaster response at the Kumbh Mela hospitals. It is he who set up and manages the facilities, which, even though temporary, are very well equipped. We have set up uh, 12 hospitals in the Mela area, and one of them we are standing here is this one. This is the biggest one with a 100 bed indoor patient, along with all the facilities of investigations like laboratory facilities. Investigation, we have x-ray, ultrasound, pathology. We have an ICU with a ventilator. And uh, round the clock, you know, doctors and pharmacists and staff nurses. Medical teams here are prepared for any eventuality, from riots to terrorist attacks, from life support to childbirth. We have had seven babies delivering here in the last uh, two weeks. And the most pertinent threat to such a huge gathering is a disaster happening anytime, anywhere in this huge area. Particularly because the weather is too cold here, so almost every small and big establishments are using a lot of methods to keep themselves warm. So their accidents of fire breaking out is very high. 
There's only sand here. This entire area was uh, sand and mud all around three months back and will be again three months later. Everything you see here, the buildings, 22 floating bridges, 122,000 toilets, and 250 kilometers of roads is temporary. The state has invested more than 800 million euros to create this vast, ephemeral city, which sits on 3,000 hectares of sand. In just a few weeks, this entire territory will be completely submerged by floodwaters. From dawn till dusk, first responders transport ailing worshippers to the hospital in Sector 16. There haven't been any critical patients as of yet, only minor cases of pilgrims who have taken ill. With all the dust in the air from the fine sand of the Ganges riverbed and the smoke from fires lit to warm the cool nights, respiratory problems are very common. Amit! Amit! We've got to go. There's an emergency. Indra and Amit have just received a call about a musician. He's having difficulty breathing and can't stop vomiting. The patient is an accompanist for a group of dancers who perform in honor of Krishna, a central deity in Hinduism. Women don't appear on stage here, so transvestite men perform the female roles. Is anyone accompanying him? After long hours of non-stop work, Amit and Indra's day is finally over. They'll sleep for a few hours, but when the sun's first rays begin to shine, they'll be back in their ambulance. In Manila, Philippines, the protectors of the Black Nazarene guide it through the narrow Palanca Street. The intensity of the moment and the heat are extreme. The flag is uh, being used to locate the roving teams easily. So we raise the flag, the, pa the patients or the people can see us, so they can bring the patients immediately to us. The image of the Black Nazarene is approaching. This signifies its uh, arrival. By mid-afternoon, the mercury reads 34 degrees Celsius. More and more devotees collapse under the blazing sun. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ace takes the more serious cases to the emergency unit away from the procession route. Uh, there's a fracture on his right arm. We need to x-ray the person. Uh, we don't have the x-ray uh, the, at the moment, so we need to transfer it, uh, the person to another facility. This procession, which brings millions of worshippers together to celebrate their faith, is an act of collective communion. But it pushes some individuals beyond their physical limits. Well, here in the Philippines, we all know that uh, we belong to a third world country. And uh, most of our um, brothers and sisters here are really struggling in life. When you're struggling, it feels good when you know that someone is also struggling. In that way, you feel that there is someone who can journey with you. There is a rush uh, since we are catering multiple patients. Uh, half of our stations are already filled up for the 30-bed capacity for the observation of patients. Okay. 
After 36 sleepless hours, our first responders catnap for a few minutes before their next assignment. They'll need all their energy to stay sharp. Somewhat refreshed, Arcase and Ace prepare for their next challenge. Mass will soon be performed at St. Sebastian's Church. It's one of the highlights of the procession, and many devotees will attend. But the location is narrow and cramped, and the pilgrims are exhausted from countless hours in the hot sun without food. So it will pose a threat to our safety. Because when the image arrives, the flow of the people from the parade will be pushing to here. But then they barricaded this with the ambulances in the steel pipe. If that happens, that's hazardous. There's no quite safe access. They are trying to risk uh, their lives. Hopefully, uh, no one would be in critical conditions once the patients are coming in. The statue has yet to arrive, and the ceremonial mass hasn't begun. But many worshippers have already succumbed to exhaustion. The crisis that many first responders feared is materializing. mornings are cold in northern India at this time of year, just seven degrees Celsius. The first of two baths the pilgrims must take every day is an intense physical ordeal in the frigid water. The shock is even more intense for the weak and elderly. Many worshippers travel here in a state of illness, and others become ill due to the harsh weather and unsanitary conditions. In sector 16 or 12, what's the name? Indra and Amit are called to assist an elderly woman who's having trouble breathing. Yes, yes. What's the number? She has a high fever. The woman is weak and her breathing is shallow. Indra quickly administers oxygen while the patient's anxious husband and granddaughter watch. What? Breathe deeply, breathe deeply. I'm trying. Please breathe deeply. Pilgrims often wait longer than they should before seeking medical care. The vast majority are from rural areas and have little or no education. Lots of patients who come here believe in black magic. They're convinced their gods will heal them. There are a lot of superstitions. We need to make sure that we provide them with all the necessary care and medical tests. We really do see all kinds of people here. Do a nebulization, give her oxygen and take her blood pressure. The medical team quickly attends to her needs. <coughs> she may have been suffering for some time before I was called, and the weather conditions didn't help. I decided to bring her in for treatment because she had a high temperature. It was important that she receive oxygen. Free health care in India is a mixed blessing. Currently, there are 500 million citizens trapped in a two-tier system who don't have easy access to health care. In the world's second most populous country, dilapidated, overcrowded public hospitals can't meet the needs of the nation's sick. 
In sharp contrast, there's a network of state-of-the-art private hospitals. But a private sector consultation costs more than 20 euros, an astronomical sum for millions of Indians whose income is less than three euros a day. I've tried everything. I gave her medication, but her situation keeps getting worse. I, I don't have much education. I didn't know what to do, so I called the ambulance. We've been coming for years, and this is the first time anything like this has happened. I hope God will take care of her. Bathing in the waters of the Ganges is an act of love and devotion for these worshippers. Even more so here in Sangam, where three sacred rivers converge, the Ganges, the Yamuna, and the mythical underground Sarasvati. According to Hindu tradition, a drop of the nectar of immortality spilled from a jar at Sangam during a battle between gods and demons hence the name Kumela, which means Festival of the Jar. We collected some wood and we lit a fire and prayed to the gods. Submitting to physical challenges is all part of the ritual for a group of worshippers who will stay the entire month. They are called Kalpavasi. They may only eat one meal a day, but they must cook their food with water from the sacred river. For thousands who wind up ill, these challenges are too demanding. An elderly woman has just arrived at the central hospital with acute stomach pain. Such cases are taken very seriously. Authorities are on constant lookout for cholera. With so many people crammed together in such difficult, unsanitary conditions, an epidemic is a real possibility. At the procession of the Black Nazarene in Manila, the chaos medical teams feared is erupting. The parade has been underway for 15 hours. After a long day in the scorching sun, devotees are hungry, dehydrated, and exhausted. <laughs> Cases of injury and suffocation are mounting. Emergency teams are completely overwhelmed. There's no room to treat new victims. Some worshippers are in a state of panic. In a trance-like state, some celebrants launch themselves at the wooden statue of Jesus, stepping on people's heads. The atmosphere is exhilarating. But in among the crowds, dozens of devotees are succumbing to exhaustion. The medic station is very far from the procession. Uh, it is harder for us to extricate the victims from the Black Nazarene to uh, from the parade grounds to the aid stations. To further complicate matters, a suspicious backpack has just been detected. This is the final stage of the Feast of the Black Nazarene. 
the Black Nazarene is now entering the, uh, now in the uh, pathway and going inside the, the church. Fortunately, the suspicious backpack was a false alarm. The Black Nazarene's journey home continues. Once inside the peaceful basilica, the statue will be placed high above the altar, beyond the reach of worshippers. Believers who want to touch the mystical Jesus will have to wait one year until the next procession. <laughs> They're asking for a transport. They're asking for a transport of uh, patients. An elderly man has fallen and been trampled by the crowd. As adrenaline levels at the parade begin to subside, Arquez rushes his patient to the hospital. His shoulder was uh, probably dislocated. Uh, there's a suspicion of uh, dislocation as well as uh, possibility of uh, fracture of the ribs. The man will be treated for free at a public hospital. Like most Filipinos, he pays a monthly premium for PhilHealth, the universal health insurance introduced in 1995. Even though the devotees are already done with the feast, we'll be staying here until tomorrow to make sure that the exit team or the people that would be uh, cleaning the streets are still safe in the areas. First responders can begin to breathe more easily. There's a collective sense of pride in the work they've done. But they know there's always room for improvement. They'll be fully debriefed, and after an objective analysis, plans for next year's procession will be drawn up. We are proud to say that we have accomplished so much. We have helped so many people. Well, there are uh, plenty from that uh, incident, and hopefully what happened tonight will be uh, one step for improvement. After working through this grueling religious marathon with nearly no sleep, the Red Cross staff will only have a few days to recover. Then they'll be off to the city of Cebu, where over two million pilgrims are expected for another Catholic celebration. This one in honor of Santo Nino. In India, at the Kumbh Mela pilgrimage, emergency workers transport sick and injured worshippers all day long. <laughs> We'll take care of you, sir. Do you have a fever? Yes, I think so. And have you vomited? Yes, it keeps happening. How many times have you vomited? Three times, I think. He was feeling unwell and had a fever, so we called the ambulance. Even if he is a man of God, he must take care of his health. But given our beliefs, we may never take medication. Christine Henriol, originally from Paris, has come seeking care for her friend, a sadhu who's been feeling sick for some time. We've had some incredible weather fluctuations recently, which is normal since we're in the middle of a lunar change. It's the full moon. We've had huge variations between 10 and 12 degrees difference. During the day, it is very, very hot, and at night, it is really cold. So we're all catching stuff. I lived in the jungle for 40 years and I never got sick. It was coming here. It's life in the city that has affected me. I'm taking medications for the first time in my life. 
The pilgrimage will last another 22 days. During this time, emergency responders must rush to the assistance of anyone in need 24 7. It's grueling work made more difficult by the long hours and unremitting noise and air pollution. Indra and Amit will remain on site for several weeks after the pilgrimage has ended. They'll be on hand to care for the workers hired to dismantle the site. Altogether, they will have been away from home and loved ones for nearly three months. But they both feel privileged to be working here. They believe it's good for their karma. The Kumbh Mela is a spiritual event that attracts people from all over the country and the world. Being here is a wonderful opportunity. People only have good things to say about our work. We don't do this for the money. We do it to help people and save lives. I always try to help each person to the best of my ability. While I'm here, I don't focus on myself. I focus on the people around me. God watches over me. Religious devotion is at the heart of the world's most important human gatherings. As millions of worshippers immerse themselves in fervent spiritual pursuit, it's reassuring to know that hundreds of dedicated emergency responders have their backs. These devoted workers know that a pilgrimage isn't over until every visitor has made it back home safely.